Hello, everyone. This is Cotty Peabody. I'm so glad to be able to send this audio greeting to all of you who have, have assembled today for a celebration of an event that has special meaning in my family. As some of you may know, my father, Endicott Peabody, then governor of Massachusetts, and my mother, Tony, helped initiate and organize the original event. My parents were both there on stage that crisp October day in 1964 when the National Park Service honored Mr. Beston by naming his little beach house a National Literary Landmark. Although I was only 14 years old, I remember that event as if it were yesterday. I even made a special trip to the outermost house with my mother in advance of the dedication to learn more about Henry Beston and to see firsthand the small and unassuming lodging from which he sought the great truth and found it in the spirit of man. My father, who passed away seven years ago, and my mother, now 83, often talked about that day and remembered the dedication fondly as one of the enduring moments of my father's term in office. Although it is 40 years later, in a time of much uncertainty in the world, Mr. Beston's works and the treasured legacy he left us, the Cape Cod National Seashore, are all just as uplifting today as that day on Coast Guard Beach in 1964. On behalf of my mother, my brother, and my sister, I pass on the warm wishes of the Peabody family to all of you gathered today to mark this event. And finally, I send a hearty thanks to the Henry Beston Society, whose hard work made this day possible, and who keep Mr. Beston's wonderful lessons alive. This is Connie Peabody. Thank you for coming, and my very best to all of you. Now, on with the show. The dune land air burns with the smell of sand, ocean, and sun. Solitary and elemental, unsullied and remote, visited and possessed by the outer sea, these sands might be the end or the beginning of a world. The whole world here in one's hand. There, on the platform, Eminent men and women, naturalists, artists, writers from the Cape and Boston Society, New York publishing houses, DC power circles, journeying now in 1964 as I first did to this sacred setting nearly four decades past, to this last fragment of an ancient and vanished land, the great beach of East Ham. Farther out to sea than any other portion of the Atlantic coast of the United States, it is the outermost of outer shores, a human life so often likened to a spectacle upon a stage is more justly a ritual. The ancient values of dignity, beauty, and poetry which sustain it are of nature's inspiration. They are born of the mystery and beauty of the world. Do no dishonor to the earth, lest you dishonor the spirit of man. Hold your hands out over the earth as over a flame. Touch the earth, love the earth, honor the earth, her plains, her valleys, her hills, and her seas. Rest your spirit in her solitary places. For the gifts of life are the earth's, and they are given to all. And they are the songs of birds at daybreak, Orion and the bear, and dawn seen over ocean from the beach or from a little house on the outermost reaches of the outermost shore. 